for that introduction because now I really don't have to say too much. I'm more interested in how many grandchildren are represented here with all these seniors. I was wondering, trying to count that. There's probably hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of grandchildren. And of course, we're grandparents as well. And probably the thing that we're most concerned about is our grandchildren coming to know Jesus and coming to know Mother Mary. And I'm sure that that's very strong in many of your hearts as well, that your children and grandchildren would come to know, of course, our Blessed Mother and her son. I'm going to share something with you that is kind of new. Only the folks on Sunday have heard of this. So this is new information for you, and it kind of relates to something that Robert alluded to, and that is the National Eucharistic Congress that's taking place in Indianapolis. How many people have heard of that? Have you all? Okay, so most of you have heard of that. So there's going to be tens of thousands of Catholics going to Lucas Oil Stadium to really make a statement about the source and summit of our faith. And Angeline and I have the privilege of processing the national pilgrim statue of Our Lady of the Cape to this particular Congress. Now what's interesting was just Friday that we found out where she's going to be placed. So you're pretty well the first to find out. And we are so excited about what Our Lady is doing because it relates to every slip that you have on the table. She is going to be placed. Where do conversions usually take place in, in a Catholic uh, parish? Where, where do we go to, to find conversion and healing? The, the Sacrament of Reconciliation, right? <laughs> the old guy. So, so Our Lady of the Cape is going to be prominently present in the middle of where all of the confessions are taking place for the entire Congress. So every penitent is going to be going by Our Lady of the Cape Offering their petitions, obviously, before they enter into that sacrament. Also, the priest will be there as well. This is going to be a sacred and special holy place. Now, here's what's interesting. On the slips that are on your table, you'll be able to sign that consecration. And on the back where it's blank... You can write down the people you want to pray for, for conversion, and we are going to place all of these slips in the ark, and this is where those intentions are going to remain for the whole Congress. Can you imagine how much prayer and conversion is going to take place through those five days? So you're really the first group of people that's going to have an opportunity to do this. I want to give you some historical background on how our Blessed Mother works in time and in eternity and transcends time. You see, it was back in 1942, in the middle of the Second World War, when Pope Pius XII consecrated mankind to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Think about that year, 1942, all of the atrocities that are taking place. And that's when he consecrated mankind to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And what do you know? Our Lady started inspiring people to process her all over the world. And it began in France. Four statues all through the war were being processed. Conversions and miracles were taking place. And that whole movement that took place between 1942 and 1945 was the impetus for the National Pilgrim Statue of Our Lady of the Cape to be brought to Ottawa in 1947 when our country was first consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. 
And what do you think they were placing in the in her ark in 1947? Consecration slips with intentions. So what we are doing today is very holy, it's very sacred, and it is so special and dear to the heart of our blessed mother. So I want to thank you that you are the first group that's going to have the opportunity to do this. This is so, so meaningful. And now I'm going to invite Angelina, who's going to share a bit about something else that's on your table that is also equally valuable and precious. Okay, everybody got your blessed rose petal. Everybody gets one of these, and we have more if you'd like more. Because after we share about exactly what this is, you're probably going to want more to give to your grandchildren, to give to your children, to get it into their homes and their houses. Now, Our Lady the Gate came into our life years ago, and it was absolutely miraculous for us and supernatural. We are definitely here to witness to what Jesus Christ has done in our lives. As Father was talking about, we go out to be a witness to Jesus. Because we were running and operating a Christian retreat in Belleville, Quebec, years ago. My husband had left the church. I was Protestant. And people could come up and have this retreat with us. And it didn't matter whether or not you were Catholic or Protestant, wherever you were from. But we had to be proud of your Catholic brothers and sisters who came up and shared with us about the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Now, for us, we were coming up getting baptized. We didn't know any better. We had lake out front. But we were drawing closer and closer to our Lord Jesus. And we had a special room set aside. Has anybody seen the, the movie The War Room? Yeah. If you've seen The War Room, it's all about a person who spends time alone with the Lord with the Word of God in the room. This is what we had when we were out of Quebec. And then after becoming Catholic, our war room became much more, like many of you, with all kinds of rosaries and statues. And oh my goodness, we should have a movie for Catholics, The War Room. So, while we were up there, we learned about the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist, and we were just like, wow, more of Jesus? Like, body and blood, soul and divinity? So we jumped all in. Now, after we became Catholic, then what happened was, our Lord Jesus introduced us to our Blessed Mother. You'd also be proud of your Catholic brother and sister, who's going to be here next month, speaking to you about the Holy Face devotion. They've been friends for years. They gave us, at one point, a little book, and many of you may know about it, True Devotion to Jesus Through Mary. It was a little brown book. Did anybody ever have one of those that somebody gave it to you, or you used it, and you did your own consecration to Jesus Through Mary, St. Louis de Montfort? Well, one year, 2011, I decided to do it. The next year, my husband decided to do it. Then our lives changed again, radically. At one point, a girlfriend said to me, Angelina, I think Mary wants to come visit you. And I was like, I've never had this before. Protestant, convert, traveling statue of Mother Mary. But I was like, sure, okay, what do I do? So she gives me instructions. I brought her home. And it was a statue exactly like this one. And I would bring her places. I'd have people come over. I was just like, there's something special about this. Like, I'd give her all kinds of intentions. And she answered, God, with her powerful intercession, we had healings happen in our family. We had a uh, place that we had to sell, we had to sell that right away, and it sold even to Christians. So then, we knew nothing about Our Lady the Cape. Our Lady the Cape, she's our Queen of Canada. We had no idea, like in France, Florence, Mexico, or Lady Guadalupe, we had no idea that as Canadians here in Canada, we had a Canadian Madonna, Our Lady the Cape, Queen of Canada. So then we went up there on a Thanksgiving pilgrimage, and this is in Three Rivers, Quebec, or Trois Rivers, Quebec. It's only three to four hours away. How many of you have been there to our Lady of the Shrine? Many hands. But some of you have not been there. Hopefully after our talk, you'll get excited and want to go. Because it's only three to four hours or so. And maybe somebody will do a bus trip at some point. Especially if you know Maria and Stan anywhere. You might want to ask them to do one. But it's very exciting to go there. So Mother Mary, after this we went there, we went on a Thanksgiving pilgrimage. And we picked up our own statue. And then my honey's touched that statue to this statue. And she's been with us ever since. She's traveled many, many places. We've had all kinds of incredible supernatural events happen in our lives. And we are so in love with her and so want to make her known in love because of everything she's done in our lives. And my husband talks about how written in the story, 
the things from Mary are written in the story big time in our lady of the gate. This is their beautiful statue right from the shrine. And they can share with you probably all kinds of stories, including those who were with us just past the Divine Divine Mercy weekend. This was incredible. We had the eclipse. So we all had our classes out, started taking some photos. We had another couple that came with us, Ed and Lana. We will be here next month with Ted and Joanne. Ed starts taking photos from his camera. And who shows up? The Blessed Mother. So we, now we have these images of our Blessed Mother above the eclipse, above her shrine, above a building called the Queen of Apostles. We are so excited about that. So that's already something supernatural, which is so beautiful. And when we showed Father Remy, who's the director, he said, oh, but she's with us. Our Blessed Mother's on the bench, and she's with us. So that's just beautiful. So we have taken her many places. And just a couple of years ago, we went traveling to our Holy Father. And on that trip also, we had somebody come to us with a parish named Holy Spirit. The Queen she has just been there recently. So this precious soul, she comes up to me and she gives me this image of our Blessed Mother. And on the back of it is her story. And as a child, her parents told her about Our Lady of Captain and that then. This is what she thought. She would call her Captain that then. This is what she figured that her parents were saying. She was about 10 or 11 years old. And I'm looking at this photo and it's just like, it's incredible. And she's got her story on there. She says, yes, my parents had friends that went to Captain and then. And the wife did not want me to get back on the bus and come back home. Back in the day, the Queen of Apostles building was used for retreatants to come there. Maybe some of you have heard about this. Maybe someone's even been there before. So she didn't want to get back on the bus. Her husband's like, we got to go, we got to go. She's like, no, it's so peaceful here. I just feel so much love. Like, just words like that. So then she's like, just take a picture. Just take a picture and I'll get on the bus. So he takes a picture. And then she gets on the bus and off they go. And then you'll, I have this picture with me today. I'll be able to show it to anybody who's interested. It's absolutely beautiful. And then after that, when we had this with us, we came across another lady who found this photo, and then she was able to even do with the latest technology to even bring out our Blessed Mother's face even more. So many things Our Lady the Cape is doing in the lives of our children. And even for ourselves, you have grandchildren. I don't know if any of you have any granddaughter or any, um, say, oh, grandchildren or daughters or daughter-in-laws who can't get pregnant. But one of the things is Our Lady of the Cape is a pregnant Madonna. And we have magazines from years ago, all kinds of miraculous stories and things that she has given to people. And one of them is people getting pregnant. So our daughter, who's a conversion story herself, the Protestant came into the church, she married a Catholic. Anyways, they could not get pregnant. So she came over one day, and we had a statue similar to the same, well, same size as the statue in our home at the time, and touched the statue's womb and touched her womb. And then five weeks later, she called and said, Mom, I'm five weeks pregnant. My praise God, Mother Mary. And then to top it off, our grandson was born on the Feast of the Immaculate Conception that very same year. Our Lady the Cape, our Queen of Canada, is fashioned after the Immaculate Conception. So how incredible is that? And now he will do his first Holy Communion this year on December 8th. And I'm praying to bring her there, the exact same statue, so she can witness and be there with him in his first Holy Communion. And we just heard over lunch Father's testimony that at the age of six is when he was called to the priesthood. So our grandson now is six. So we never know. <laughs> so these blessed rose petals are so special. We learned from the magazines, they call them the annals. This is what was in there. The revival of the confraternity in 1867 had been brought about by a prodigy. A new prodigy sprang up in its conquering march. It is important to notice that the tangible sign by which the Queen of the Rosary prefers to bestow her favors is that of the blessed roses, symbols of the aves of the Rosary. It is this especially, we are told, by the Curate Father Duguay, which causes the confraternity to stand apart. He adds, the prodigies which the pastor, Father Disolet, obtained from the Queen of the Holy Rosary, because Our Lady of is also Queen of the Holy Rosary. Our Lady of has quite a few invocations. And from the Queen of the Holy Rosary, through the Blessed Rose Petals, are without number, and many are public knowledge. That was back then, she's still doing it today. 
Since we found out about this, we have been passing out Blessed Rose Petals. People can have their pastors do it in their parishes. People have done it in their parishes. They give it out to people. You ask Our Lady to take the favor you need with your Blessed Rose Petal. When we first found out about it, we asked for a job for my husband. He got at least two offers on something different. Other people, we started to have a collective book in our parish with people getting their favors. Father Roger Vandenacker at St. Timothy's, he started it and they had blessed rose petals up at the altar for people to grab whenever they wanted to. I think he told us today that he filled the book. Yeah. So I wanted to share with you a couple of ones that are very beautiful. So from a woman named Enza, now she does it herself, she's in Toronto area. She's constantly getting roses, whether they're from funerals, um, somebody else, and something else she shared, and then she'll get them, bring them back home, dry them out, put them in plastic bags, put stickers on them, and away you go. So she says, I have been blessed to hear about the many favors granted by our blessed mama through the use of this extraordinary sacramental. To name a few, a lady who needed surgery for a broken arm after a serious car accident was healed after placing the pedal in her cast and asking our Blessed Mother to intercede for her healing. The doctors were shocked at the follow-up appointment because the x-ray confirmed it was badly broken, which is why they were considering surgery. It was miraculously healed. No cast or surgery was needed. Another lady placed the Blessed Rose Petal in her cast, requesting Our Lady's intercession, although she received the Blessed Rose Petal after she wore the cast for five weeks. She did not need the physiotherapy doctors usually prescribe. So Enza says, I believe our Blessed Mama has granted countless favors through the Blessed Rose Petals and continues to do so today. Some people also testify to seeing images of Our Lady in the Rose Petals. Now this one is extremely precious. We all have grand, our love us have grandchildren here. This is from Camilla, age seven. Our Lady the Cape came to our church. <laughs> I asked Mother Mary for a lizard. A lizard. <laughs> the very next day, my friend Brad gave me a lizard toy. <laughs> I call my lizard Lizzie. I knew Mother Mary sent me a miracle. It's coming out of her mouth, exclamation mark. Another miracle happened. I have bad allergies. Even when I was a baby, my eyes get red and puffy. I sneeze and get stuffy. My medicine, or medicine, maybe that's her grandmother, her mama, only helps a little. One day, I was feeling really, I was feeling bad. My eyes hurt lots. At church, my baba prayed with me and put blessed rose petals on my eyes. Right after that, my eyes were better. And then she puts. Mother Mary loves me! Exclamation mark. <laughs> I got it in her own handwriting with a little picture of a lizard. <laughs> so all to say, feel free with great confidence to have your blessed rose petals and to ask all the favors that you would like with them. Also, I just want to mention two of these blessed rose petals. The reason why you may want to get more, and you may even want to ask your priest to bless them and start doing this beautiful ministry, it's very easy to do, is in the prayer, which you can see here, we've got a bunch of these flyers here, you can take one home. The prayer's on the back. Part of the prayer says, May they receive so powerful a blessing that in the houses and hospitals where they are taken, the sick may be healed. From the places where they are kept, may the powers of evil flee in fear and terror. May, nor may they presume again to disturb your servants. So that's probably why we'd like to get a lot of them into our family's homes and also to children and anywhere, really. They're just beautiful. So if you need any more, we do have more. Now the other thing is also we want to share with you is is Mother Mary calling you to our Lady of Peace Shrine? We sure hope that she is. Because we just, we have a place there called Regina's, and on this piece, photo or this pamphlet here that we'll give to you, you'll be able to see on there a place called Regina's. And then this is absolutely amazing that we even have a spot there. But we have offices there, and we have two incredible, beautiful rooms there. We have one room that is full with holy relics. And I have pictures of that here for some people to see if you are interested. So we started this last year, and I don't know how many countless souls have been in there and what they have experienced being in the presence of so many holy relics. Today we have Blessed Mother Marie, the only with us. We'll do a prayer with her and ending off the talk. 
Because she was at our gate that came with her sisters years ago. They served the priesthood. And she received a miraculous healing through the intercession of our lady Kate. And this year, many of you may know that she's clear for canonization. So that's huge. She is one of our blessed Canadian saints. We, so we will pray with her. And also the queen should have brought with us. I think it's a piece of the veil of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Like how amazing is that? Catholic. Being Catholic is incredible. Like, I mean, it's amazing the things that, that are available to us. Now, this past time we were at Divine Mercy Weekend, we opened up what we call the Rose Room. And this room we have in there, now Pauline and Steve Winogrand did an amazing job on your crucifix here at your parish. It is absolutely beautiful. And they were able to touch up for us a beautiful statue. You can't see a lot, I know, from this man he had out, but we have a picture of her too. And we call her Mother the Sorrowful Heart. And they made a beautiful heart for her, and we placed her into the Rose Room. We were learning about Mother the Sorrowful Heart, and one of the things that she does is she'll give spiritual renewal. We've already had one person who spent 15 minutes with her and came out just crying this when she was in our home before we even brought her there, holding something in her heart for months, and she was able to let it go. <laughs> Beautiful spiritual healing. So she's there now, and with her is a whole bunch of holy relic oils, oils and things to pray with. So Regina's is really becoming quite the place to come and just have that spiritual experience of prayer and being able to use the sacraments that our one holy Catholic church, uh, church has to offer to us. Now the last thing I want to talk to you about really quickly, but it's so important, is joining the Arch Conference here and have the Most Holy Rosary. When you join, it's absolutely free. The big thing too is that it only requires three mysteries of the rosary to be prayed in the course of a whole week. I even went and looked in Google research how many hours are in a week. And this is only three mysteries. Because at the time when it was established, they didn't have the luminous mysteries. Of course, praying luminous mysteries is amazing. Praying more than one mystery a day is absolutely incredible. But if there's anyone here that for whatever the reason, you're just not praying the rosary, maybe today you'll want to consider either picking it up again or even starting it. Because it's only three mysteries. So one joyful throughout the whole course of the week. One sorrowful throughout the whole course of the week. One glorious throughout the whole course of the week. You do it like inside an hour altogether. And they even say you can split it up one decade at a time. Why do you want to join? Look at the spirit. Listen to the spiritual benefits that you're going to receive. And by the way, children can join also. People who have grandchildren... If you can even think about doing this with your grandchildren three times a week on Zoom or something, I mean, how precious would that be? You receive, number one, the special protection of the Mother of God. Big, big, big. Let's think about children nowadays. If you were to save your grandchildren, this is what you're going to get. I imagine, wouldn't it be great to hear the response to that? Number two, you'll get a share in the prayer of countless thousands of members, this world over, and this even after death. This is so massive. Just before this talk, I happened to come across one of the books that we have. Some of you might be familiar with it. Jesus Speaking Heart to Heart with Gabrielle Bosses or Bosses. And inside in there, I had written in there, I don't know how long ago, how to avoid purgatory. You can imagine you finding out about purgatory as a Protestant. That was a big deal. But thanks be to God for his mercy. So in here, I have here, doing the will of God in the present moment is one thing. And then it says, never stop praying for the dead, those you pray for. Because if they are in heaven, they get two things. Who's ever heard about accidental glory? St. Thomas Aquinas. This is massive. These folk, people that we pray for, if they're in heaven, they get, number one, increase in intimacy with God. Number two, Increase in its intercessory power. So when that means, so when you join the Arch Conference during Most Holy Rosary, after you pass away, like my father-in-law, who came back to the church late in life, he had joined the Arch Conference during Most Holy Rosary, so he's probably trying to do at least his three mysteries a week. Now he's getting thousands of members all over the world praying for him after he has passed away. Lord willing, if he's in heaven right now, Every time we're praying, because whenever you pray your rosary and you join the confraternity, you're praying for all the members living and deceased. So then, he gets, he's getting this on an ongoing basis. This is massive! 
This is from St. Thomas of Aquinas, and it's called Accidental Glory. So on the day that you join, you can gain all sorts of talks about here. Plenary, various plenary, uh, plenary and partial indulgences. You can do that on the day you join. And if for whatever reason you want to join today and it's not going to happen for the plenary indulgence, there's many ways to have to, to, to a plenary indulgence. Because this is also under how to avoid purgatory. I'll just give you a few here. Pray the rosary with a family member or in a group. Half an hour before the Blessed Sacrament. Half an hour reading sacred scripture. It's so important. And making the stations of the cross. And then we do the prayers for the Holy Father, Confession, Mass, and Communion. What our Father, how Mary, glory be. So the other thing is a share in the prayers, masses, and that's all the works of the entire Dominican order. All of this you get for joining the confraternity, and it's very simple, only three mysteries a week, not a day. Throughout the whole course of the week, you're going to receive all these incredible spiritual benefits, and it's amazing. So we'll just end today. Oh, also, you have this on your tables as well. This is, if you'd like to write your name, just first and last, and then put it into the red bowl that we have here, right, the red velvet box. We're going to be giving away screeners of the free movie on the Bridge of Roses. I'll just share this really quickly. We've done a movie on Our Lady in the Cave, and then, so we'll be giving away free screeners. You'll be able to watch them on your computers on there. And also, we have Mary Consecration for Little Souls, folks. So you can do your consecration nine days, very short, but very powerful, and for children as well. And we have we have all kinds of wonderful sacramentals for donations that have touched holy relics. Very, very precious things are available for you. So why don't we end with a prayer to Blessed Mother Marie Leone, who is now going to be canonized, Lord willing, this year. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is to obtain a favor. So when we come to that part solicit, I'll stop, and you can just give her all the favors you're in need of. O oh God, who are admirable in your saints, we beseech you, grant us through the intercession of Mother Maria Leone, the faithful servant of the Holy Family, the favor we solicit. Thank you all, and we hope you can make it to the shrine at some point to see us.